Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Field and I'm the new Curator of Ornithology here at the University Museum of Zoology at Cambridge and I'm excited to show you around the discovery room here at the museum where you can see a huge number of the birds that you might be able to see in different habitats around Britain including some rare vagrant species that you might only be able to see on occasion. So as we walk through the discovery room we pass through different habitats, for example if we look over here, we can see a number of the common woodland birds that you might expect to see uh, around Cambridge. Over here, we've got Breckland specialties like this incredibly powerful, uh, beautiful northern goshawk. Over here, we have species that you might be able to see right around the urban parts of Cambridge, including the area surrounding the David Attenborough building, where the University, of Muse uh, University Museum of Zoology is based. But one of the star species in this display is the common swift, a species which is currently breeding in nest boxes on the side of the David Attenborough building. And of course, common swifts are a very common sight above Cambridge in the breeding season right around now, uh, hawking insects on the wing over even the, uh, the urban center of the city. Um, but they are one of the most fascinating species of birds in the world. They spend about 10 months of the year on the wing, migrating from their breeding sites here at the David Attenborough building to Central Africa, where they essentially fly constantly and never land, catching insects over the rainforests of Central Africa the entire time before returning back north to Europe to breed. Other exciting species that we have around here include species that have only recently regained a foothold in East Anglia, like this incredible great bittern, which is a representative of a species that was extirpated as a breeding species from the British Isles until only relatively recently. So a long time ago, hundreds of years ago, before the fens and wetlands of East Anglia had been drained, the bittern was a very common species around here. And it's only in the last few decades that bitterns have returned to the wetlands of East Anglia, largely as a result of habitat rehabilitation projects uh, across southern England. Who doesn't get incredibly excited when they're walking along the riverbank and spot that distinctive flash of blue and orange that indicates a kingfisher is actually nearby? You're incredibly lucky if you ever see one at rest they are highly territorial and spend most of their time uh, flying up and down the riverbanks looking for fish. They have to eat 60% of their body weight each day. And in the spring, a nesting pair will excavate a tunnel 60 to 90 centimeters long uh, along a riverbank. In that, they will lay two to 10 eggs. And when the chicks hatch, they will take up to 25 days, maybe more, to fledge. They have two to three broods per year and so that's an incredible number of chicks when you think about it, but only a quarter of those will survive until the next year. So the next time you see a kingfisher at rest, it's well earned. For me, a sure sign that summer has arrived is the sight of a common tern flying above the river cam. This migratory species has long tail feathers and has earned itself the nickname Sea Swallow. They arrive with us in April and spend the summer here to breed, leaving us in October to fly all the way back to Africa where they spend our winter months. This species is the most commonly found inland, following the waterways as it goes. So this summer, look out for it along the coast, but also along your local rivers and lakes. If you're lucky, you might see it hover and then plunge into the water to catch a fish. This impressive specimen next to me is a golden eagle and I'm always amazed that there are birds this size flying around in the UK with several hundred breeding pairs mainly in the remote parts of Scotland. That's quite a long way for this specimen 
to reach us here at the Zoology Museum in Cambridge. And actually every specimen we have on display here has its own story as to how it did make its way to us. So sadly this female golden eagle actually flew into some power lines in Scotland, uh, after which she was then found and taxidermy to preserve her. She then spent about 20 years taking up quite a lot of space in someone's garage before finally being donated to us here. Although it is sad that uh, this animal passed away in the way that it did, the fact that it is now on display here means that more people can learn about these amazing creatures and the challenges that they face.